been said that Ronald Melzack is to pain research what Einstein was to physics. Melzack is an emeritus professor of psychology, known to psychology and medical students worldwide, because Ronald Melzack forever changed our understanding of how humans feel pain. When Ronald Melzack enrolled as a freshman at McGill University in 1946, he really didn't know what he wanted to study. But his sense of curiosity and determination would certainly influence how he would study. Pick a tough problem. Don't pick an easy one. Really, the, the joy of research and science is the challenge of the problem. And that's exactly what Ronald Melzack did. It was an undergraduate psychology course that piqued his interest. The department chair was none other than the great Canadian psychologist Donald Hebb. Hebb would later become Melzack's PhD supervisor and mentor. As a graduate student, Melzack studied emotional behavior in dogs. That's when he made his first major discovery. Well, what I discovered, it was part of my PhD thesis. It was with Scottish Terriers that were raised in special ways so that they got very little sensory input. And I discovered that they feel pain quite differently from their uh, brothers and sisters who were raised in homes. So obviously the, the background of the, of the animal had, a, had a, an impact on the pain. What Melzack observed was contrary to what medical science was teaching at the time in terms of pain. Since the mid-17th century, prevailing medical wisdom held that pain was a very simple event. Nerve impulses, for example after sustaining a burn, were assumed to travel through a spinal pathway to the brain, and when those impulses arrive at the cerebral cortex, the person feels pain. The more damage done to the body, the greater the pain. Simple cause and effect. And the problem with this idea, of course, is that it's too simple. People who have terrible kinds of, of pain, cancer pain, or uh, arthritic pain, or phantom limb pain, uh, what the neurosurgeon tries to do is to cut that pathway. It's, that's the logical thing to do, right? Wrong. That had been done often, but patients still experienced pain. The concept of a pain pathway was first proposed by French philosopher René Descartes in 1664. Called the specificity theory, it remained unchallenged until World War II Dr. Henry Beecher observed that a significant majority of soldiers seriously injured in battle didn't feel the pain initially. Melzack was also intrigued by surgeon William Livingston's 1943 book, Pain Mechanisms, which also questioned the specificity theory. Melzack had found his challenge, rethinking how humans really feel pain. So you have to start looking at a very much more complicated mechanism in the nervous system. And that is what I began to do and I, when I realized that it's not a simple straight through pathway but it's got to be a highly organized central nervous system, a highly organized brain that can take nerve impulses, which after all are simply electrical activity in, in a substance, and turn it into what we feel as pain. After earning his PhD from McGill in 1954, Melzack joined pain pioneer William Livingston in his lab at the University of Oregon Medical School. I think I was the first psychologist to work as a physiologist in a department of surgery. There he met Mrs. Hull, a patient who had had both legs amputated above the knee, but who was experiencing severe pain in her phantom limbs. And she had horrible pains in her feet. She felt like her ankles were in a vice and the vice was crushing them, or her foot was in a flame burning. and. Um, I began to write down these words. It's a burning pain, it's a crushing pain, a, a stabbing pain. Melzack noticed that patients used a variety of words to describe their pain. He collected over 100 pain descriptors, though he was not yet sure what he'd do with them. In 1959, he joined the faculty at MIT, where he met a kindred spirit, neurophysiologist Patrick Wall, who also was fascinated by phantom limb pain. 
Both Melzack and Wall believed that psychology and environment were key factors influencing how humans experience pain. So in thinking about how that might work, I began to think of something that would sort of shut the input going up to the brain or open it up. Something like a gate. In 1965, Melzack and Wall introduced the gate control theory of pain in a landmark paper published in Science. According to their theory, nerve impulses travel to the spinal cord where they are influenced by other nerve cells that act like neurological gates. The gates either block pain signals or allow them to continue onto the brain. The signals are processed according to a person's mood, personal experience, environment, and context. From there, signals are sent back down the spinal cord, determining the kind and quantity of pain that is felt, if any. So uh, your, your concern with it might sort of open up a gate, as one thinks of it, one could think of it, that lets in information about what's going on there. Uh, or, uh, and then you see that there's really nothing wrong when you take a look and so the gate closes and the bad pain you had is really not so bad anymore. It changed the focus of pain from the spine to the brain, and that was a tough sell. We originally made a guess that the very tiny cells which sit around the entry point might were good candidates for operating this control. But it was a real guess because we really couldn't examine either the anatomy, pharmacology, or physiology of those little cells. Now it is possible. It's a physical mechanism and it's we found it and people have hundred people have worked on it. There are thousands of pages written on it. We know what the uh, electrophysiology is, what the chemistry is, and so on, of the, of the gate. The gate control theory is today described as the most influential paper ever written in the field of pain. It validated the role of psychology in pain research and management, and led to the discovery of the body's own natural painkillers, like endorphins, and to treatments like transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. This is a sensation of picotement. Okay. Dis-moi quand ça commence à picoter. Having returned to McGill, Ronald Melzack continued collecting pain words from patients. I thought, I'm going to start giving these words to people who are having a baby or who are uh, having a, an operation or have some, have some kind of pain, arthritic pain, rheumatoid arthritis, let's say, and uh, see what words they pick. And they would pick the same kinds of words. There was a, a pattern to the words that were picked for a given problem. With the help of a statistician, he found a way to evaluate the kind and quantity of pain implied by each word. In 1975, Melzack published the McGill Pain Questionnaire, used to assess the type and intensity of pain a person is experiencing. It's very important to look at this sort of thing because it gives you a clue as to how the, the neural mechanisms in your brain are working, what, where, where in the brain they are working. Now translated into over 50 languages, the McGill Pain Questionnaire is today considered one of the most powerful tools used in pain research and treatment worldwide. Patients were always central to Ronald Melzack's research, and in 1974, he co-founded the first pain clinic in Canada at the McGill University Health Centre. Today it is recognized as one of the finest in the world. He had one pain that was to him most amazing, and that was a pain in which his legs, would, they would, this pain would happen most often. At Melzack's fascination would... with phantom limb pain, in which a person feels pain in a limb that has been amputated or is missing, inspired his neuromatrix theory introduced in 1989. Melzack suggests that we are born with a genetically determined neural network in our brain. This body-self neuromatrix creates the perception we have of our body, our sense of self, and can generate chronic pain, even in phantom limbs. I have the neuromatrix theory, and uh, what I don't have is a model of the brain that would fit it. And that is what I'm developing, a new way of looking at the brain. Ronald Melzack has devoted over six decades to solving the puzzle of pain. While the puzzle is not yet solved, Ronald Melzack can be credited with having found many of the cornerstone pieces.
very gratifying. It's wonderful. And it makes me want to continue. Because the job isn't all done. <laughs>